Hi, this is Matthew Smielewski, you're watching Ministry of Twang, and welcome to my new multi-part series called Complete Guide to Lousy Finger Picking. Hope you like it. Let's have a look at some basic chord shapes and right hand techniques that we'll need for our finger picking tunes. First of all, we'll use thumb to play bass note and part of the chord. So we'll use A major chord using some alternate fingerings and a couple of notes will be added or moved around a couple of frets in this major chord. We'll use the uh, standard E shape move to fifth fret but sometimes instead of using a bar we'll use our thumb over the fretboard and we'll move our ring finger to fourth string and it's gonna be a little bit easier to finger that way here is the diagram of standard A major chord now a major with a thumb instead of bar and without pinky and ring finger on fourth string instead of fifth okay. okay now let's have a look at two approaches to alternating bass note first one that I like to use and I try to use it as much as I can is to use open E string as a alternating bass note to A so I'll apply my finger picking pattern right now so it's thumb on the 6th string chord which is basically one single strum through two middle strings D and G Okay. Then I re release my thumb and play open six string and the same thing two middle strings. So it goes like that. So there's a plenty of work that thumb does there is almost a complete accompaniment and uh, when I just do my thumb work and move the chords around so there's plenty of music going on just by using using the thumb so I got my fingers ready to do the melody part and uh, this was like a first first approach using same right hand pattern pattern for alternating bass note and unfortunately it's gonna work in key of A because we use open string it might work in the key of E But there is not much else that we can do with open strings and alternating bass notes but uh, well luckily there are plenty of finger picking tunes are in the keys that use open strings so it's quite useful it's good to remember that we have this sort of possibility just you know by removing our thumb from the fretboard we alter the bass note uh, second approach is again with using open strings but this time we won't use our thumb over the neck we'll get rid of it completely I don't mean like cutting it off but well I hope it, that's clear okay um, by using a little bit different thumb pattern we'll move from fifth string okay so we got it fifth string two middle strings sixth string two middle strings so right now 
the thumb does the skipping action. Fifth string, two middle, six, two middle strings. Okay, and uh, my uh, fretting hand is at the same position all the time. Okay, so this is like a second second approach to alternating bass note. Uh, it's useful in those situations where we don't want to use our thumb or we use some movable chords because our bass note will be in different places all the time. For example, for the chords that has a root uh, on the fifth string, we'll use this picking pattern, for example. C major in the third position, okay? So I got a little bar with my pinky across three strings, second, third, and fourth. And I'll do the same picking pattern in here. Okay, so this chord is movable. I can apply it anywhere on the fretboard, it, it will work. The only trick is that I use my index finger to make my alternate bass thing. Okay, so... Okay, and my right hand is doing the same thing all the time. It's fifth string, two middle strings, six, and back. Okay, so there's like a basic strategy for alternating bass notes. Uh, there are some situations that uh, our fretting hand is quite busy doing the melody and uh, well it's not always possible to do the alternating bass note anyway. So we'll stick with old thump chord, thump chord thing with the same note in the bass. There is nothing wrong about it really and um, Plenty of guitar players um, use this sort of approach in their uh, interpretations of popular tunes and uh, there are some situations where Chad Atkins himself also used this sort of thing. So there's nothing wrong with, with doing unalternated bass from time to time, for example in the closed position chords uh, like B7. have to finger uh, the fifth of the chord on ninth fret which is not not too comfortable and we're getting rid of one finger that might be useful for the melody so uh, well it happens that s s sometimes we'll, we'll alter the bass sometimes we won't okay with the uh, chords that use a root of uh, fifth string it's a little bit easier because we usually have our alternating bass note, our root of the chord, and fifth is just on the same fret, one string up. So uh, let's have a look at the C chord again. I just do one slight movement to alter my bass note. And when it comes to some uh, more fancy chords, it's usually quite the same. Probably the root won't be under under uh, our index finger, probably under ring finger, like in case of uh, D7 chord. With this dominant shape. I hope it's gonna be in here. Yep, dominant shape. The uh, melody of the tune uh, is, uh, well, is a, one of the notes of the chord or some sort of passing note that is really close, usually half step below, half step above, whole step above the chord note. Uh, 
so it's also quite uh, important to know where they are and to learn um, to change the formation of our fingers for certain notes like uh, for example um, making our A major chord a 6 chord by adding pinky on some thread or make it uh, a major 7 chord by moving index finger or make it uh, a added 9 chord okay so uh, those little notes are part of the A major scale okay so I'm not really doing anything special in here with my left hand, no stretches, no weird things. It's just using my pinky. Okay, so here is A major chord with added fourth. Seven with added six, a six with root on top, a added nine. It's not important how uh, we call those chords. It's uh, more like having the melody note against a major all the time. So I just try to visualize my a major chord. It's it's here. It's always been there, and. Uh, I just try to play my melody holding the chord and I use what I have. Well, there are only four fingers, some of them are busy, so it's usually moving what's there around. And for example, with uh, our favorite tune that everyone wants to play, Mr. Sandman. We actually have two of those chords. And the verse starts with this one, which is major seven with six. Okay. So melody is on the first two strings and it's just within the chord that it's already there. So, uh, here we have uh, our rhythm pattern applied with alternating bass. And I hold the same chord for two melody notes. I just choose my strings with my index finger. So it's first string and the second string with chord. So it's So uh, basically by knowing those chord voicings, those little modifications, we start to hear them all over the place being used on the finger picking tunes. And once we recognize them, we know they're there, we know where to find them, we know how to modify them. So that's like a basic approach. And uh, well, um, that's probably all for this episode and I'll Mm, next time I'll try to uh, do some more uh, detailed look at what's going on on Mr. Sandman, a couple of new chord shapes, new chord voicings and where they come from. So this is going to be like the longest tutorial in the world to learn the tune that you probably already know. You just download the tab and you learn it and you know where to press. But my goal is not to show you where to press, but uh, see how things work, how it's constructed and uh, 
uh, how it relates to the most basic stuff because in general uh, when it comes to harmony and arrangements I try to keep my thinking to most basic stuff so I usually think in terms of three chords three uh, modes of the chords so it's major minor or dominant and uh, everything else is just more like uh, like icing on the cake melody notes are usually um, played over those chords one of those three chords and of course there are plenty of different variants and inversions of those chords but they're quite uh, easy to learn once you know where they're coming from uh, so yeah my basic approach is to uh, uh, learn the harmony see how the chord is modified and well remembering that usually even the best players usually use uh, you know two hands and five fingers each so there's not really uh, anything impossible around it you know there are things that are unknown once they are known they of course they lose their charm once you know how to play certain tunes it's not that great not that magical anymore uh, but still plenty of fun uh, to learn the style to learn and understand understand style and make your own music using those tools okay so uh, don't like the video if you don't like it subscribe for more and uh, I'll try to make another episode as quick as possible been a while since I've posted any videos this one is like more advanced stuff hope you'll find it useful and well you'll make a cool use out of it and apply it to your own songs your own arrangements and uh, well hope to see you next time take care